So this right here is most likely a diamond planet. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be talking about a very recent study that analyzed a lot of different carbon planets out there and also conducted an experiment here on planet Earth discovering that it's very likely there are billions and billions of actual diamond planets out there. Planets with a very thick crust of diamond on the inside. So let's discuss this in more detail and also discuss how all of this was discovered and, well, let's begin with the planet that's not a diamond planet and that's not a carbon planet either, planet Earth. If we were to talk about planet Earth, chemically speaking, it's actually an oxygen planet. There is a lot of oxygen here, not just in our atmosphere. A lot of it is inside rocks, a lot of it is inside the actual crust as well. And even though the atmosphere of planet Earth contains about 21% of oxygen, the crust on the surface, essentially what we're walking on, contains about 46% by mass, with about 28% of silicon and about 8% aluminium, 5% iron. But even as you keep going down, in the mantle of our planet, you'll find more oxygen there too, normally in two elements, silicate oxides and magnesium oxides, which together represent roughly around 80-90% to of the entire mantle, so even inside the planet, there's a lot of oxygen. Which is, to some extent, surprising, but at the same time, not so surprising. Because when it comes to the chemical ratio, our sun is also technically an oxygen star. It does have mostly hydrogen in it, but when you look at the other elements, there's more oxygen than, for example, carbon. Now, currently, there is no really good explanation to why this is so, but the assumption here is that, while well, the supernova from which the sun was created, and the solar system as well, was most likely created by a star that was more rich in oxygen than in carbon. Which also implies that every other star that this supernova produced eventually is also probably an oxygen star and has oxygen planets. But as you can probably imagine, as we discovered more and more planets, especially in the last few years, we started realizing that there are a lot of other types of planets that have to exist out there that don't exist in the solar system. Specifically, pure iron planets, which usually would be the densest planets in the galaxy, carbon planets, which don't exist in the solar system, and also other unusual exotic planets like pure water planets or pure carbon monoxide planets, all of which will depend on the total composition of the star system from which they're made. Now, because we can normally see the composition of a star, we can thus deduce what some of the planets are probably made out of as well. And of all of the stars that we've looked at in our own galaxy, roughly around 12% of them have the ratio of carbon to oxygen slightly higher, at least 65% as a matter of fact. Which would also suggest that the planets orbiting these stars would most likely also have more carbon than oxygen. And this of course implies that some of them will have very unique compositions and very unique structures. The planet on which we started in the beginning of the video is known as 55 Cancrii E, although it has gotten a real name now and is known as Planet Jensen, named after the French astronomer Jules Jensen. And because of the higher levels of carbon here, the scientists do believe that this is probably one of the planets we're going to be discussing in this video. In other words, this is a carbon planet, but it's also very likely a diamond planet, with the ratio of carbon to oxygen being around 78% in total. And according to the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below, what happens in these carbon planets can be described as a chemical reaction inside the planet itself. So these planets for the most part are probably going to be made out of silicon carbides, which to some extent is the equivalent of silicate oxides that are present on planet Earth. Silicate oxides are quartz, which is what you see right here. And because we believe water is present pretty much everywhere in the galaxy and possibly everywhere in the universe, a lot of these planets most likely will end up having a lot of water delivered to them over the period of millions and billions of years. But as this water accumulates on the surface, it most likely starts reacting with the silicate carbides, and all of this happens in very high temperature and high pressure situations. Which is why the scientists behind this paper try to recreate this here on Earth by using the very famous technique known as diamond anvil cell. It's when you take two diamonds, like the ones you see right here, and put something between them and then squeeze it really really hard, creating extremely high pressure and even high temperature conditions if you use lasers to shine on those materials as well. And this is how we're able to study, like for example, what happens inside Jupiter, inside Saturn, inside other high pressure and high temperature conditions, 
because here very high temperatures of thousands of degrees and also very high pressures, millions of times higher than the atmospheric pressure on Earth, can easily be created to try to mimic the conditions on for example Jupiter. But in this case they were mimicking conditions inside carbon planets. Here is actually one of the best representations of a typical carbon planet because we also believe these planets are probably really really dark. And so what did they discover? Well, they discovered that the chemical reaction eventually starts converting silicate carbides into quite a lot of diamond silicates. They discovered that silicate carbides and water eventually start producing a lot of diamonds and a lot of silica, and also a lot of silicate crusts on top. They also discovered that there's going to be a lot of leftovers of, for example, methane and hydrogen, which will probably form the atmospheres of these planets. In other words, what this all suggests is that these planets become diamond planets with very very thick layers of diamond where planet Earth would have something like a mantle. And this actually has really really important implications for the evolution of these planets. Now the diamonds are not forever. Unlike the song from James Bond suggests, diamonds will actually convert into other materials. But they do last a very long time in certain conditions such as in high pressures. Most importantly, diamonds are also extremely hard. This is why we use them for this particular procedure. And because they are so hard and so difficult to bend, it's very likely that all of these diamond planets would have absolutely no chance to have any kind of plate tectonics. They would not have continents, they would not have any type of a moving surface, which would also naturally mean that all of the materials in the atmosphere start accumulating and are unable to be fixed and to be moved into the planet itself, which is what happens on planet Earth. This is for example how carbon dioxide exchange works on the planet. As these elements accumulate on the surface and as they create thicker and thicker atmosphere, they obviously create much more pressure and a lot more extreme conditions than even Venus. This could also potentially create temperatures up to about 3000 degrees Kelvin and really high pressures, millions of times higher than planet Earth. But these diamond planets would also have extremely unique atmospheres, filled with methane, hydrogen, and a lot of other unique gases that might not exist on oxygen planets because normally they get fixed with something else. But most importantly these planets would have no ability to have any water, not even a drop of water, because water would instantly react with carbon and a lot of carbon elements, changing it into something completely different. And obviously when it comes to the atmosphere it would mostly be carbon dioxide, possibly carbon monoxide, and a lot of other carbon elements. Things that we normally refer to as smog here on Earth. So this would be a very thick smog, making these planets look something similar to what you see right here. So don't expect these diamond planets to be shiny or sparkly. But what about alien life? Well, in some sense I guess it would be possible if it's really really outside of the box. But Earth-like life could not possibly exist here. It does need to have some sort of a circulation of the atmosphere and because the diamonds would just not allow for the actual plate tectonics to exist, it would most likely be extremely inhospitable to most of the life as we know it, even extremophile life. In other words, even bacteria that can usually survive in extreme conditions. Nevertheless, some really exotic life, carbon life, that exists in some other way, I guess could be possible. But right now we just have no idea. Most importantly though, we now have a pretty good idea on how to possibly identify these carbon planets. The scientists behind the study were able to identify that the carbon layer would actually create very specific density changes in the planet, making the planet a little bit bigger than it should be. So if we do discover a planet that we're certain is a carbon planet and we are able to determine its size and of course its mass, we'll then be able to tell if it is a diamond planet after all. Although right now, chemically speaking, the study itself makes a lot of sense, which also would suggest that there are millions if not billions of these planets in our galaxy all over the place. And before you ask, the closest such planet currently confirmed is the planet I mentioned before, 55 Cancuri e, around 41 light years away from us. So kind of far, probably not the best way for us to try to find more diamonds. But do these planets deserve to be called diamond planets? Do they really have so many diamonds on the inside? Well, this would be a pretty large percentage here. A planet like 55 Cancri AE could contain around 30% of mass being diamonds, or possibly even more. But when it comes to our own planet, the mass of diamonds here is roughly around 0.001%. That's at least 10,000 times less, possibly even more than that. 
So assuming we call Earth the oxygen planet, these objects here are definitely diamond planets. Which obviously makes this a pretty exciting discovery confirmed in the lab here on Earth. But I guess until we actually find another diamond planet, hopefully somewhere closer, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. But also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.